Hello, everyone, and welcome to the June 5th uh, episode of the Women in Product Toastmasters Club. Uh, I'm your Sergeant at Arms, Amy Kirkland, and today our theme is B2B versus B2C product management. In addition to a great speaker today, we will have, be also holding our annual elections, which will bring in a new team of leaders to the club. I'm excited for, for the meeting today. At this time, I'd like to introduce our president, Erica Tamburo. Thank you so much, Amy. Uh, welcome to today's, today's meeting. It's an exciting meeting. Uh, we will be um, voting our newest, um, New, newest team of leaders uh, into the, the mix for our uh, very exciting year three. I want to uh, take a moment to congratulate all of our outgoing leaders um, for you know, helping the club empower every woman's voice at the table. You all have done really fantastic work, really important work. Um, you all have grown yourself as well as um, helped many people around you grow as well. So um, I hope you can take a moment um, and really soak in your accomplishments for the year. Um, so thank you all for all your hard work and listening to me talk through so many meetings. Um, matches are out for the new mentoring program. Thank you all for your um, um, your understanding is I'm a little bit behind on that and playing catch up, um, but they're out. Um, anybody that doesn't have a match or um, still wants some mentoring, please reach out to me uh, and I'll find you somebody. Um, one thing I want to remind everybody to do that's very, 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 very important is when you are done with your speeches, please go into base camp and mark them as complete. Um, as you do that, you get credit for um, completing your tasks and you get credit for completing your levels. And also the, um, the club gets credit for that, which is really important for us to uh, be meeting our club goals. So the district is watching, just want to make, they want to make sure that we're making progress and doing what we should be doing, which we are. So uh, please head over to base camp and make sure you mark your stuff complete. Um, and um, plan out your next level of speeches. So you, whether you're in level one or level two or five or wherever you're at, um, take this month to really plan out where you're headed next. Um, and, um, you know, um, get that on your agenda. All right, today we'll have a Q&A following the meeting. Um, anybody that's here as a guest, um, you're welcome to stay around and ask us questions uh, that you might have about how, being a Toastmaster, about our club, about how club meetings go. Um, I want to welcome everybody. If you're a guest, I'm going to ask you to put guests in front of your name so it's easy for me to find you. Um, and I'm going to have you say hello, um, say how you found us, um, and just introduce yourself to the club. Today's meeting, uh, just before we start to do that, uh, was a little bit of a different meeting. We're going to have elections um, at the beginning of the meeting. Um, June is election time in Toastmasters world, so that uh, July starts off a new, um, new round of leaders. So um, these aren't traditional um, you know, project speeches, but you will be able to uh, learn who our leaders are moving forward and learn a little bit about the Toastmasters roles. Um, and you're all here to learn not only uh, speaking skills, but leadership skills. So this is an interesting meeting for you to have joined us today. Um, and then we'll get into our regularly scheduled uh, type meeting. Um, so I'm gonna take a moment to ask our guests to say hello. Um, and let us know how you found us or share um, a goal that you're hoping, hoping that we can help you accomplish. All right, uh, Ranjani, hello. Hi, good morning, good afternoon. Um, I am Ranjani and I live in Dallas, Texas. And I found you all through uh, Women in Product, um, listening to Jennifer's speech, I believe. And 
interestingly, I also see a friend of mine who's joined. I didn't realize she would be joining uh, this forum, Manisha. So, uh, hey, Manjini. Great to meet you all virtually. And my goal with this, um, with joining Toastmasters, is to speak publicly, confidently, improve my confidence in public speaking. So thank you. Wonderful. I'm so happy you found us. This is definitely the place to, to get that experience and to, to build that confidence. So hope you enjoy meeting us today and uh, we'll say hi again at the end of the meeting. Um, I'm gonna, uh, Manisha, would you like to say hi? Yes, how are you? I'm trying to start my video. Okay, there you go. I'm so excited to be here. I just love, uh, I'm very passionate about women in general and supporting them, embracing our vulnerabilities so that we just allow us to shine and supporting each other. And um, found you guys. I've been active on the other women in product group on LinkedIn and in, uh, on Facebook. And this one somehow just I don't know how I lost it, but I was glad I got the pop-up for today's event and um, Jennifer was able to send me in. So thank you. Whoever signed me up and gave me the link, I really appreciate it at a short moment. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad to, to meet you today and um, your values are the same values that we all share here. So I'm very happy to meet you. Um, let's see. Gabby. Hi, everyone. Um, this is my second time uh, joining, but it's been a while since the first. Um, so uh, yeah, I first heard about this via the Women in Product Conference. Um, and the reason why I'm here is, uh, you know, I'd like to improve my communication skills, uh, specifically when public speaking, but also kind of gain that confidence. Um, that I feel that I'm lacking at the moment. So I'm hoping that this is a step in the right direction. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm here. Sorry about that, I accidentally clicked where I shouldn't have clicked. <laughs> it's good to see you again, Gabby. Um, yeah, and welcome, and I hope you enjoy today. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other guests that would like to say hello? We got everybody. Um, all right. So without further ado, um, I'm going to going to introduce you to our Toastmaster of the day, who is going to lead us uh, through today's elections and speeches and everything. Uh, Amulia is a PM at All Day Kitchens, uh, an early stage startup in the food operations space. We're all very happy about everybody that's doing great work in food operation space. She enjoys cooking, reading, and paint by number in her free time. Uh, last year, she transition, transitioned from a B2B to a B2C company, and she is interested in also exploring the intersections of the two spaces. So what a great uh, meeting for you to, to lead us through today. Uh, without further ado. Thank you, Madam President. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, it is my privilege to welcome you all to today's meeting and to introduce our theme of the day, which is B2B, business to business versus B2C, business to consumer product management. Like Erica said, as someone who has had experience working on both sides of this coin and experiencing the challenging and fun parts of each, I'm very excited to hear about all of your experiences, listen to your questions and gain your insights. I hope that everyone can walk away from today's meeting um, having learned something new. Today is also election day for our club. So I'm looking forward to all of us being a part of that process and welcoming in new leaders to our wonderful club. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and pass the torch back to our general evaluator today, Erica. So Erica, if you um, could just go over your role and introduce your team, that'd be really great. Sure, happy to. Uh, greetings, everybody. 
I am today's general, gen, general evaluator. Um, I evaluate everything that happens in the meeting today. Um, during the meeting, I'll take notes about what happens, what doesn't happen, um, and evaluate each participant um, just to give feedback uh, so that we can all get better and grow together. Um, my team, I have a great team, a very great team. Um, let's see, we have a prepared speech and speech evaluators. You'll meet them towards the end of the meeting. Um, then we have some interesting roles um, that I'm gonna ask um, them to um, introduce. So first we have the awe counter. Rosie, would you like to tell us what you're doing with the awe counting? Perfect, uh, greetings. Erica, Mrs. Toast, or Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests. The purpose of the awe counter is to note words and sounds that are used as a crutch or pause filler by anyone who speaks. During the meeting, I will listen to overused words, including and, well, but, so, and, you know. I will also listen for filler sounds, including ah, uh, um, and er. I will also note when a speaker repeats a word or phrase such as I, I, or this means, this means. And at the end of the meeting, I will provide a report of the number of times each speaker has used these expressions. Thank you. And back to you. Thank you, Rosie. Um, next up, we have Ashley, who is our timer for the day. Ashley, would you mind telling what you'll be doing? Not at all. Thank you, Erica. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to be your timer. So I will be uh, pretty much keeping track of how we're doing in terms of time. So starting and finishing the meeting on time is one of the crucial tasks of any meeting. My job today is to keep track of the time taken by each participant and give feedback using time cards when they reach their limits. The green timer card indicates that minimum time is met. The speaker should start wrapping up when the yellow card is shown and the red card will be shown when the speaker reaches the time limit as timer. I will time the formal speeches, table topic speakers, and the evaluations. I will also alert each speaker of the time they have left using the green, yellow, and red cards, which denote specific times remaining. So those giving speeches should limit their remarks to their specific speech times. If we had anyone doing an icebreaker, icebreaker speech today, that would be between four to six minutes in length, but standard speeches will be five to seven meeting, five to seven minutes in length. Apparently words are hard for me today. In terms of table topic speakers, please limit your remarks to no more than two minutes. And then for evaluations towards the end of the meeting, those should be between two, uh, two minutes to three and a half minutes or so. All right, that is my time. For now, you probably won't see my face until the end of the meeting, but that is it for the timer. And Erica, back to you. Thank you so much, Ashley. All right, up next, we have Tiffany. Tiffany is um, leading two roles today, table topics and vote counter. Uh, Tiffany, would you mind sharing with everybody what you'll be doing? Certainly, and thank you, Madam General Evaluator. For my first role as table topics master, I will pose a set of impromptu questions. Each, uh, I'll pose each question to everyone, then invite someone up to the stage to share their insights. Each impromptu speaker, like our lovely timer said earlier, will have about two minutes to respond to each question. So aim for taking at least one minute to share your thoughts. Since the questions are ad hoc, send me a direct message via the Zoom chat to inform me if you wish to simply listen. And before wrapping up this portion of the meeting, everyone will have a chance to vote for your favorite table topics speaker of the day, um, during which I will prompt as vote counter everyone to DM me your favorite impromptu speaker for today. Back to you, Erica, and thank you. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Guests, we really welcome you to participate in this uh, impromptu speaking part of the meeting. Um, and like Tiffany said, if you would like her not to call on you, please let her know. Otherwise, uh, you're fair game. All right. And last but not least, we have our grammarian, Tanya. Tanya, would you like to introduce uh, what you'll be doing today? Yes, thank you, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests as grammarian. It's my 
responsibility to pay close attention to everyone who's speaking, listen carefully to language used. I'll take note of any improper language, as well as any outstanding words, quotes, sayings, or thoughts that I find extra special. As grammarian is also my duty to introduce the word of today, the word of the day. And for today's meeting, the word or combo of words is laissez faire. It is a French term that when literally translated means let it be. You may have heard expressions such as she has a very laissez faire attitude or in business, the term is used to describe a leadership style that allows people to use their own skills and talents to succeed. The best example of this style in use is Warren Buffett. He has surrounded himself with people who he knows can perform their tasks creatively and added adequately without his help. And he only intervenes when needed. This style also allows mistakes to happen so that people can learn from them. Each speaker is encouraged to use the word of the day. And at the end of the meeting, I will, when called upon, I will give the grammarian's report and also report on the usage of the word of the day. Good luck. Thank you. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Tanya. And that is that is the team for today. Um, so without further ado, I am going to hand it back to Amalia to lead, a, lead the meeting for today. Amazing. Thank you so much. Madam General Evaluator, and thank you all for introducing your roles for our meeting today. I believe we will be going ahead and proceeding with our next portion of the meeting, which will be our election. Very exciting. So I will be going ahead and introducing our candidates, as well as the roles that they will be running for. And each candidate will have about one to two minutes to go over their motivations for the role and introduce themselves to the club. And after these brief speeches, we have a Google form for members to go ahead and place their votes into. And we'll be announcing the new leaders over email. Great, so I will go ahead and start off with our candidate for president, which is Rosie. Rosie, would you like to introduce yourself and go over your motivations for this role? Of course, uh, thank you for the mic. Uh, so my name is Rosie Hernandez and I'm excited to be running for president of the Women in Product Toastmasters Club. I've been part of this group since fall of 2020, which is around the time that Erica and Lori were posting in the Women, of, uh, Women in Product Facebook group, uh, recruiting the initial members for the club. And I'm so glad I decided to join when I did because it was at the time that I was able to focus on my public speaking skills and incorporate those into my interview process that I went through in 2020 and 2021. Um, at the time I was a brand new member and so my focus was working on those public speaking skills and then a couple months in the opportunity to join the leadership team came about and I decided to go for treasure. As treasure I learned so much about what it means to be on the leadership team. I picked up new organizational skills. And most importantly, I learned about knowing when and how to follow up with people. And if you've ever worked with cross-functional partners, you know this is such a crucial skill to have. Um, and now I've shared with you all about what this club means to me, how it's helped me grow both professionally and personally. And I now wanna finish off by sharing why I'm running for president today. Um, I want to help other women grow through Toastmasters the same way that I've gone through my progress of being able to grow both professionally and, and personally. Um, additionally, I want to continue the amazing work that Erica has started as president. She's done a phenomenal job. So I'm, I'm sure um, <laughs> it's gonna be a tough road for me to ramp up to the amazing high standards that she's set for this role. However, I know that the learnings I've taken from being part of the leadership team as treasurer will help me prepare um, the ins and outs of what it takes to really make sure that this club is continuously growing and being successful and of course supporting other women. Um, and then lastly, I know it's gonna take a lot of work and commitment to ensuring the success of this club and I have time. <laughs> so that's why I'm running for president and thank you all and happy voting. Thank you so much, Rosie. 
Uh, I'd like to call out to the club if there is anyone else who would like to run for this position as a write-in candidate, feel free to message me now just so we can have that down and, and include you into our form. Uh, so go ahead and message me um, after we introduce each role if you'd like to be included as a write-in candidate as well. Great. So our next candidate is for VP of Education and Marguerite is running for that role. Marguerite, would you like to introduce yourself and explain your motivations for running for this role? Yes, thank you, Amelia. Uh, so my name is Marguerite Owsley and I joined the club about a year ago. And so far the experience has been really enriching for me. Uh, my self-confidence has improved through giving speeches and taking on meeting roles. I've learned about everything from career management to API design, API design from the women in this club. And uh, I want to take on the VP of education role so that I can help my fellow club members get as much out of the experience as I have. I generally, I really enjoy helping people with per, their personal development and career development. Uh, so as VPE, I would encourage you all to try every meeting role, uh, deliver speeches regular, regularly, uh, and progress through your pathways projects. And I'll continue the practice uh, of crowdsourcing meeting themes from you, from you. So we're exploring topics that everyone cares about. And most of all, I, I would look forward to getting uh, to know new members and getting them started with icebreaker speeches and supporting existing members with any questions and challenges you have. Uh, and I also look for ways to make the processes that we use more efficient and to add new processes as needed uh, in terms of assigning roles or picking themes or managing meetings. And uh, Lori is the current VP of education and her shoes will be you know, tough to fill, but I plan to do my best to ensure every member uh, learns as much as they can from this unique and, and amazing uh, Women in Product Toastmasters. Uh, club. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marguerite, for introducing yourself and explaining your motivations there. Like I said before, if there are any other members who would like to add themselves as writing candidates for the VP of Education role, feel free to message me. We'll move on to our candidate for secretary, Tiffany. Tiffany, would you like to Introduce yourself. Certainly. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Hi, everyone. I am Tiffany Chang. I joined the club this April and I'm continuously inspired by and learning from everyone here. The club's mission to create space for women's voices at the table in product development really resonates with me in several different aspects. As the first and only product person in my organization, being an introvert, being an Asian woman, since we're stereotypically associated with people pleasing and soft spoken behaviors, and being a young professional. The secretary's responsibilities include drafting agendas for club meetings and leadership meetings, ensuring decisions, action items, and other relevant next steps are documented in meeting minutes, and certainly last but not least, supporting the entire leadership team in making progress on our projects in service of our clubs long-term goals and mission. Now, as a newer member, I reflected on my system in Notion for capturing timer, at counter, grammarian, and speech feedback across meetings. Uh, let me know in the Zoom chat as to which tool you like to use to capture this information from each meeting. One idea that's been percolating in my mind is creating a journal-like structure via Google Docs that each of us can duplicate and update on our own time after meetings. That way we can track and evaluate our individual progress over time. I'm really excited to work with everyone here to continue moving the needle on empowering product ladies' voices at the table so we can all co-create a more diverse and all-inclusive future. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Great, so we can move on to our next candidate, which is our VP of membership, Sina. Sina, would you like to introduce yourself? 
Sure, thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Sina Ive. I joined this program or this group about five months ago, and I've been impressed by the leadership. Uh, it's awesome what this small group has done in like only two years for us 20 ladies to come on a Sunday afternoon, <laughs> keeping our sleep away and everything away. So just following that uh, guidance, I would like to run for the VP of membership. Uh, for this role, the, my main agenda would be to make sure that new members are onboarded properly, welcomed properly, make sure that they get all the guidance that is needed. I'll be working very closely with the VPE and the treasurer to make sure that journey is uh, clean and clear. Um, also, I would like to thank Svetlana, who was the previous VPM. Uh, she did help me a lot with question, answering my questions. I would like to follow the same uh, guidance and help out with the others in the leadership uh, team. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sina. The next role um, that we'll be going over is treasurer. I will be running for treasurer, so I'll go ahead and introduce myself as well as why I'm running for this role. So hi everyone, I'm Amulia. I've been a part of this club for about a year and it's been a truly fantastic experience for me so far to build myself not only as a speaker, but also as a product manager overall, as well as a leader. So I'm really excited to run for treasurer this year and help our club manage our assets, help process dues and help new members join our club. As treasurer, I hope that I can make any information about dues really easy to access and understand for club members, especially new club members. I know that transparency is really crucial, especially in relation to anything financial. And so I hope I can make this information as easy to understand as possible and really transparent to anyone. I look forward to also learning from Rosie, who is our current treasurer, who has done a really great job in this role. And I look forward to answering any questions from folks and really being a part of an amazing leadership team and helping with our operations as a club. Thank you so much, everyone. Our next role that we'll be going over is VP of PR. Shreemai is running for that role. Shreemai, would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Uh, I am Srimai and I joined this Feminine Product Toastmasters Club uh, from the beginning and I was a charter member and I'm so happy I did that because it's been uh, such a great experience um, and very the and I found the environment very nurturing and um, where I could in, improve my uh, communication skills and confident and reach a lot of goals that I um, that I wanted to achieve uh, before. So um, when this VPPR role opened up, I really was uh, thinking if I could be, if I could uh, actually contest for this role. And then it brought back memories of my high school. So back in the day, I was the front phase of my high school uh, events and I was comparing, um, announcing things to people and it, it brought a small smile on my face. And um, that gave me a lot of excitement. And um, I thought I should contest uh, for this role. And as VPPR, I understand that we, um, I'm responsible for coordinating uh, public relations. So basically, I want to have, a, if elected, two-pronged approach, uh, maintain good public relations uh, between among the club members. And the second one is to maintain good public relationships um, to the outside world, convey the message of women in product Toastmasters um, in a way that people are uh, people know what exactly we do and uh, if, you know, uh, get interested if they're interested provide all the information for them to join um so I, yeah uh, it, it it's very exciting i do it, it it's actually great to see everybody's story of how they find the club how they found the club through linkedin you know uh, facebook women in product conference so it's because of all the great work our vpprs did um, the, the leaders earlier so i want to definitely uh, add on to that and uh, uh, have a PR plan and uh, uh, 
collaborate with all uh, other leaders and uh, ensure the success of the club and success of the members. So that's about me. Thank you so much, Jamie, for that fabulous introduction and explaining your motivations for running for that role. Our next role is Sergeant of Arms, and I believe Erica is our candidate for this role. Erica, would you like to introduce yourself and explain your motivations for running for this role? Sure, thank you so much. Um, everybody, I've been so happy, grateful, lucky, proud, blessed, and all of those wonderful things um, that come with being the co-founder of this club and your president for two years. Um, you know, you all know that I love you in this club very dearly. Um, and in the interest of continuing to help not only the club to grow, but also others in their leadership journeys, uh, I'm stepping down as president. I've gotten a couple of messages asking why. So that, that is why this club is for you guys too, not just for, not just for me. Um, but never fear, I'll be taking up the role of immediate past president, supporting the next president um, that's taking up the mantle. Um, you know, even after being a Toastmaster for two years and having participated in our leadership, but at leadership at the district level, um, I know there's much to continue to learn about each of the leadership roles. And I'm hoping to continue learning and leading by running for Sergeant at Arms. Um, our previous Sergeant at Arms is, ha have done a fantastic role, uh, job creating the role. Um, and I'd be remiss not to thank them for taking the role from scratch and creating such a seamless club meeting experience. Um, this year, I hope to add polling to our meetings um, and welcome any additional feedback that you all might have regarding the club meeting experience. So thank you so much uh, for your time and uh, back to you, Amila. Amazing. Thank you so much, everyone, for going over all of your roles and your motivations and introducing yourselves. I'm really excited about these potential new leaders for our club. Again, if anyone else would like to be considered as a write-in candidate, feel free to send me a message so we can go ahead with that process. And for everyone who will be a part of our voting process, we will be taking in votes through a Google form. I can, it's in the agenda. I can send it out um, in our chat as well. And we'll be going ahead and announcing new leaders over email. Amazing, so we can now go ahead to our next portion of our meeting, which is our prepared speeches. So I'll be introducing our speaker for today, Marguerite. Marguerite is a senior product manager with more than 10 years of experience, mostly, most recently in startups and in innovation. Currently, she's focused on an inclusivity project in Nike's new business incubator, Valiant Labs. She's also the VP of Community Management for the Black Product Managers Network and is excited about the opportunity to serve as VP of Education for the Toastmasters Club. She is, her speech title is a B2C PM, explores her B2B options and her pathway is presentation mastery. Welcome Marguerite and we're so excited to hear your speech today. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Amelia. Uh, so one of my favorite things about this club is the meeting theme. I shape my speech around the theme because it usually pushes me out of my comfort zone. Today's theme, B2B versus B2C product management is no exception because I'm pretty, I knew I think next to nothing about B2B product management <laughs> before I wrote this speech. Uh, for most of my career, I've worked on inter internal tools uh, and direct to customer products or consumer products. So even, uh, and even when I worked for a B2B company, uh, my role was very focused on user experience and not the products that were sold to businesses. And I've enjoyed my focus on consumer products, but I am curious about B2B companies. Uh, many, of the pro many of the products I admire uh, are B2B, for example, Carta, Miro, Slack, DocuSign, uh, these products have made my life as an employee so much easier uh, than it was when I started my career. Uh, 
more than 10 years ago. Uh, plus many of the <laughs> most interesting companies that reach out to me on LinkedIn are B2B. So I figured I should explore. <laughs> So for the speech and potentially my career, I did a little research into the differences between B2B and B2C product management. Uh, and then I also put some thought into whether or not B2B would work, would appeal to, work would appeal to me uh, and if my experience could translate. Uh, I shouldn't know, I want to also, I want to know before I keep going or continue that I stuck to software businesses because I don't have the experience with physical products in general, whether it be B2B or B2C. So, I'm sure there are additional differences between the disciplines if you, you know, factor in physical products. Uh, and before I dive into what I found to be the most challenging differences between B2B versus B2C product management, I'll point out the obvious. They are also very similar. Uh, both types of PMs have to understand customer needs, thoughtfully launch iter you know, iterative improvements, work clo closely with engineers, and collaborate with cross-functional stakeholders. The first difference I'll highlight is that the user, uh, users and buyers are usually separate for B2B PMs. The company leadership BPs decide which software products an organization uses, and they're mainly concerned with things like price, capability, security, uh, permissioning over the ease of use for the employees who actually have to use the product. Uh, luckily, I have some experience with some of those enterprise needs like security and permissioning, uh, but as a user experience focused PM, sacrificing usability would be a tough pill for me to swallow if I switch to a B2B role. Uh, that said, companies like Slack have proved that a great user experience can be a strategy to acquire enterprise cust uh, customers. Indiv individual teams within companies use the product and eventually advocate up to leadership to, uh, to adopt the product company-wide and more B2B companies are trying out this strategy or are adopting this strategy. Hand in hand with managing separate buyer and user needs, B2B uh, PMs have to deal with the fact that individual customers and sales teams often have much more leverage over prioritization uh, than you know, any one B2C customer. And honestly, this aspect of B2B product management could be very challenging for me. I would hate to be put in a position where I had to build something that serves only one customer uh, and not uh, the broader customer base. That said, prioritization is really easy for any kind of PM. Uh, so in the right company, I imagine it would be possible to develop a prioritization framework that you know, kind of put a, a cap on customizations uh, for single clients so the larger product strategy could progress. And third difference between B2B and B2C uh, product management that I, that I think would be challenging for me is that B2B users want improvements, but they don't want those changes to interrupt their current workflows. So a laissez-faire approach to launching changes will not work for them. <laughs> they might need extended training before adopting new features, so the adoption and feedback cycles take longer. And I'm very used to you know, users who are willing to learn new features quickly, uh, as long as I, you know, my team and I have put the effort into make, you know, creating a, a great user experience and then getting, I'm used to getting very quick feedback. Uh, I could probably sell my previous experience working you know, extensively with customer success teams and developing detailed training docs to a potential B2B employer. And since it is best for customers, I think I could develop the patience for a longer uh, new feature adoption period. Uh, there are other B2B versus B2C differences that I identified, but didn't highlight like the specific metrics or uh, develop the need to develop industry knowledge, uh, longer release cycles, because I don't be believe they would be as challenging for me to overcome or accept if I were to pursue B2B roles. Uh, and I'm sure there are also some differences I missed. Uh, based on what I've learned so far about B2B product management, I'm, more, I'm even more interested in exploring the opportunities out there, uh, particularly with companies that serve small and medium-sized businesses, and those that also prioritize, prioritize user, uh, a good user experience. Uh, if any of the B2B PMs think I've misunderstood anything about B2B product management, Feel free to let me know. 
uh, it's definitely a new space for me. Thank you everyone for your attention and back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you so much, Marguerite. That was a wonderful and very, very insightful speech. Could we have two and a half minutes on the timer for written remarks and any questions that anyone might have? Any questions on Marguerite's speech, any comments? I can get us kicked off, Marguerite, from your experience in B2C product management. Do you think, you know, working in different B2C companies itself has been, you know, different kinds of learning challenges that you've had to overcome just in the B2C space itself? Um, and how do you think those would compare to completely switching to B2B um, would be interested in kind of learning that, um, you know, over the course of your mm -hmm. career? Yeah, I think, yeah, in general, yes, as you switch, I've had a few, you know, four or five roles over my career and you have to learn completely new processes, completely new customers. So in that sense, like just that growth mindset, the ability to learn new things, I think apply, like would also, would also apply to switching from B2C to B2B, I think. And I personally, I keep trying to keep the mindset that I can learn anything. Um, maybe not like physics, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, anything to do with sort of product management um, in uh, with, you know, re reasonable industries for me. Um, I think it's, you, you can sort of, I can definitely adapt those processes of how I learn things um, and process them quickly um, from switching roles to switching to B2B. Awesome. I see um, Kashmira raise her hand and we'll go to Manisha after that. Um, yeah, just um, one question I had was going from B2C to B2B, I think the onboarding process would be very different. Um, can you speak a little bit on that? Uh, yeah, I imagine so. So I don't, since I haven't been in the B2B space before, but I imagine like you really have to depending on the, the product, you have to learn a lot about the industry. With consumer products, you have, I mean, theoretically everyone <laughs> could be your customer. So it's sort of e easier to sort of catch up in that, in sort of, a, and you can use beh behavioral science and um, experimentation and, and uh, user research to sort of understand customers. But with B2B, you have to really learn the industry and the specific needs of an industry. If you're in it so I think it would take a lot yeah I, I think it would take longer to ramp up thank you Manisha would you like to ask your question as well yeah I worked at a company and the implementation team would constantly keep reminding oh this is B2B this is B2C and it was very frustrating because I truly did not understand what is the basic difference between B2B and B2C so maybe Margaret, we can have this conversation for a later time because I don't think we can explain this very succinctly, like even the time frame that we have. So I'll connect with you separately and just get your feedback and understand this. Because I don't know how important is this when it comes to interviewing for new positions or do you even bring this up in your interview for other positions? So I'll just have a separate conversation with you. Yeah, that sounds great. I would love to chat about this further with anyone. So yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to you, Manisha. Thank you. Awesome. And I think our table topics uh, round will also get some really great insights from folks who might have had experiences in B2C or B2B uh, spaces and get some of those thoughts in as well. And so we'd love to move on to our next round table topics. Tiffany will be our table topics master for today. Tiffany is currently working as a product operations coordinator at a B2B supply chain startup where she is leading a newly formed product management team as her organization prepares to relaunch their SaaS platform and company brand. 
when she's not working, you'll find her reading, writing, lifting weights, watching anime, or dealing with her existential dread. So totally relate to that. Tiffany, would you like to go ahead and get us kicked off with table topics? Sure thing. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Good morning and or good afternoon to everyone here and another warm welcome to our guests. A couple of you have pinged me to indicate that you don't want to be picked for impromptu speaking. So consider this to be your final reminder to ping me if you would simply rather listen. For each question, just to reiterate, I will first state it, then invite somebody up to the stage to share their thoughts. Each speaker will have between one to two minutes to respond to the question. Remember, there is no right or wrong answer. Simply focus on sharing your perspective as it's accumulated from your experiences and learnings to date. I'm positive we'll all learn something new from each one of you. At the end of table topics, I'll send out a list of today's impromptu speakers into the chat, and I invite everyone in today's meeting to vote for your favorite speaker by sending a private message to me. Now back to today's theme, business to business and business to consumer are one of the biggest umbrellas by which products can be differentiated or categorized. Personally, I only have hands-on experience working in B2B, and the bulk of my B2C knowledge actually comes from reading and listening to various resources. So let's, let's further explore nuances in B2B and B2C products. I'll be taking a bit of a laissez-faire approach because some of my questions were answered by Marguerite's amazing speech. So let's get started with the first question. In your experience working on B2C products, what is a reoccurring reoccurring theme that continuously challenged your product development team or teams in providing the most value to your customers and users. Jen, would you mind taking this question? Um, yeah, can you, can you ask the question one more time? Yeah, sure thing. In your experiences with working on B2C products, what is a reoccurring theme that continuously challenged your product development teams in providing the most value to your customers and users? Yeah, okay, well, thanks for that question. Um, unfortunately, I've mostly spent most of my time in my career in B2C, B2B, so I'm gonna kind of tailor it around what I can imagine a B2C recurring theme could be, I think one of the things that would be a challenge from a usability perspective, I think uh, Marguerite was spot on in the sense that user-centered design and usability is really much, in my opinion, much more important in B2C type of activities. It's not, not to say that it's not important for B2B um, type of products, but I think that that's how you get that initial flywheel if you will, in terms of just the sheer momentum of getting more and more users onboarded. I think identifying what those are um, for your product is really important and can be really challenging, especially in that B2C um, kind of construct and being able to prioritize them as well. Back to you, Tiffany. Thanks, Jen. That actually really brought up um, a very relatable topic because usability has been top of mind for my team as of late because we're there are a lot of nuances and layers to our product that ironically are sort of a black box to a lot of the organization right now. So we're sorting through those to deal with the complexity so our users don't have to when we relaunch a product and platform. Moving on to our next question. What factors influenced your choice of working on a B2C or a B2B product? Let's see. Monique. All right, can you hear me okay? You sound great. Okay. Awesome. Can you repeat the question one more time for me, please? Sure thing. What factors influenced your choice of working on a B2B or B2C product? Yeah, so for me, I have had the 
experience of working in both. Uh, and I think for me, what's most important, and I don't know if it really needs to be B2C versus B2B, is um, like, I think similar to Marguerite, like I love the, the user experience side of product management. So for me, the most important thing is that I'm working on a product where user experience is paramount, where all we care about is usability and uh, just working really closely with designers. So that can happen, like, and for, an ex for example, a company like Slack, that could happen really well, and it also could work at Meta and working on Facebook or something. So um, I, think, I think for me, that is most important. Things I would consider from my experience as far as some of the challenges with uh, working with B2B is definitely just kind of dealing with the, the sales team and um, having that as another team that you collaborate with, which you learn so much from, uh, but it, it definitely tests your skills as far as being able to make sure that you are getting to the root of the customer problem and not always just looking at a solution. So um, that, that is how I decide. Thank you, Tiffany. Thanks, Ani. That leads very well, actually, into my next question. As a PM in the B2B space, how do you balance that push and pull with sales, account management, solutions, consultants, and or customer success? And I'd like to invite Amy to take this question. Thanks, thanks Tiffany. Uh, can you repeat the question one more time? Sure thing. As a PM in the B2B space, how do you balance that push and pull with sales, account management, solutions consultants, and or customer success? Great question. Um, that is definitely a challenge. And um, as, a, as a B2B product manager, I deal with our account management, our sales team all the time, and their need to please their customers. Um, one of the things that I think for me as a B2B product manager, though, is talking to our customers directly and listening to their direct feedback is really important. And often the sales people and the account managers sort of misinterpret or um, I'll just say misinterpret what the customers really need. So one of the I think the a good way to balance that is to is to just talk to the customers and and really understand their needs and try to um, then come up with solutions that we can share back with account management. Say, I know they're asking for this, but what about this? And typically, that I think is very effective. Thanks. Thank you for sharing that. I, that totally resonates with me on so many different levels. So I really appreciate you sharing that insight with us. Thank you. All right. My next question is, what are litmus tests that you use to validate product market fit in your B2B or B2C product? And I'll invite one of our guests up to the stage. Ranjani? Let me know if I pronounced your name correctly. Oh, Ranjani, uh, you're Ranjani. fine. Thank Perfect. you so much. Um, could you repeat that question? And if you could put it in the yeah, chat. Yeah, sure well. thing. Thank Can you. do. What are the litmus tests that you use to validate product market fit in your B2B or B2C product? Um, I am a, actually a technical product manager, and I in fact, uh, have this frustration that I cannot talk to the users directly and in a B2B um, model as well. But I work very closely with the product owner to run these kind of litmus tests by way of actually running usability tests uh, to talk to our users. And our users are not even customers there uh, they are a government local government uh, they are in the local government space so they're not not the most willing to talk with us so um, 
So going back to the question of the litmus test I use is to, uh, to actually question what problem we are solving. What is, I always ask the question, what is the problem we are trying to solve here? So I, if I can get an answer to that question, then that feature is prioritized higher over something that is, would be uh, nice to have. So the litmus test is um, what problem am I solving or are we solving here? That's a really fine way of looking at it. I know sometimes, especially um, in my experience working with sales, especially on the big mid enterprise or enterprise accounts, they can be very finicky about whether or not they let you talk to customers. Right. So thank you yeah. for that. <laughs> All right, my next question is, what is your experience with working on a product in a domain with many complex compliance and regulatory considerations? I will hand this question to Svetlana. I'll repeat the question for you too. What is your experience with working on a product in a domain with many complex compliance and regular, regulatory considerations? Great question, Tiffany. Thank you. Uh, I don't have an awful lot of experience with a product like that, but right now I am working with a, with lawyers. Basically, it's a uh, it's a product that is sort of building a digital marketplace for legal talent, and so of course there is a big compliance component in the work overall, and so the approach that I take is just very intentionally mapping out the stakeholders and especially legal stakeholders in our legal department who uh, are involved in the process to make sure that they have visibility into what we are doing uh, and what we're planning so that anything, any changes that we release, any features that we release are uh, in compliance with, with, with the restrictions that we have. Great, thank you for sharing that, Svetlana. And <laughs> I was originally gonna pose that question to Sarah because I know she works in construction, but thankfully I looked at, <laughs> looked at your um, LinkedIn profile. So I knew, knew you worked um, with lawyers. So thank you for sharing your insights. All right, moving on to the next question. Uh, this sort of ties back to um, some of the conversation I saw earlier in the chat. What is a common misconception that your experience has taught you to debunk about working in B2B or B2C product management? We'll pose this question to Kashmira. Um, can you repeat the question, please? Sure thing. What is a common misconception that your experience has taught you to debunk about B2B or B2C product management? Um, so I am a very new um, product manager and um, I've actually not even worked with product managers for almost five years now. And the current role is an internal uh, platform product <laughs> management. So, um, to answer to, to, to answer the question, like I don't even know what misconceptions or myths are out there. Um, but just speaking to my own experience, and um, to be honest, I've just been on this in this role for two weeks now. So uh, but I think there is a, at least in my experience, there's a not a really clear distinction between product owner product manager and a program manager, at least that's what I have experienced. Like if I, I went and interviewed one of my platform teams and um, just to get an, an understanding of what they're doing and how I can make them and convert it into a product. But the manager just started off with saying, hey, these are the problems I need to solve. And um, how do I get that operational thing going? And 
my response to that was that's a program manager's job. That's not me. So I think that's one of the uh, fuzzy areas, the distinction between the different PMs, which is product owners, product program managers, and project managers. So uh, that's where the, there isn't enough clarity. Um, I hope that answered the question, but that's so far been my experience. <laughs> Thanks for sharing your experience, Kashmira. I totally get you on the whole um, idea of boundaries and are these my roles and responsibilities, especially working in a startup environment, there's always so much going on and sometimes it can get really confusing when there's something that should be taken care of but isn't and you're not sure if it's um, part of your responsibilities to do so. So thank you for sharing. Next question. What are principles by which um, you stand you stand by in your product practice? Um, let me see. C Sina, can you take this one? Sure. Thank you, uh, Madam Table Topics Master. So the question is, what are the principles that I stand by for my product management? Okay. So one thing I try to keep up with is trying to go to the actual user of the product and making sure the pain points that I am thinking is the pain points, like do that whole research of what they are looking for, what they are trying to find in the product, why are they coming to our product, do my own research and understand the, the motivations behind the consumers directly. For I have worked with mostly in B2B space also, so our consumers are mostly like, uh, I think Marguerite was talking about, we have two sets of users. We have the actual person who pays for the product and the users who are using the product. So making sure that both their needs are qualified and understood and the motivations for both of them is um, quantified correctly. Yeah. So that's my main thing. And the other thing I also agree with Monique, I'm also user experience focused. So my eyes goes to the buttons and the colors and everything. <laughs> So I make sure that the uh, the look and feel is easy, simple to use, and um, simple to follow through. Thank you. Thank you, Sina. I know um, recently in working with my new team and especially really leaning on my product designer to bring that user experience expertise to the table has been so incredibly valuable as uh, my company is preparing to uh, launch in the new year. Uh, let me see. About two more questions. Okay. <laughs> Next question. What are some of your favorite resources, such as books, blogs, and such, to learn about product management in general, regardless of it being B2B or B2C? Um, Rosie. I can't think of the name of the book, but I know what it, it looks like. It's blue and it has like a switch on it. And I loved the book because it walked through tech and it gave examples of like B2B, B2C. And it also talked about like how engineering, PM, like a different data science, how it all worked. And I want to say it's called like flip the switch or like something switch, but that was such a great book for me to learn more about B2C. Um, so I've worked more so on the B2B side. Uh, yes, swipe to unlock. That's what it's called. It's not a switch. Swipe to unlock. Um, thank you. <laughs> uh, but yes, that book was really great. Um, it gave me more context of what like B2C would be like. I think I would... I think I really like working on the B2B side, especially when working with like large businesses, but also like the very small, like mom and pop shops. Um, it was something that I was able to work with when I was at DoorDash. Um, now that I'm at Meta, I know our product is for customers. However, I worked more so on the internal side. So I don't get to see what customers really want or need, but it's something else that I think would be really nice to have that knowledge of. Um, and then that book, Swipe to Unlock, gave me visibility into like how Uber went about to like figure out the interface, that sort of thing. And so, yeah, that's a really great book. Um, 
if you haven't read it, definitely pick it up. Thanks for sharing, Rosie. It's been a while. It's been a couple of years since I read that book. So I think this is a good reminder to go and check out that book. Um, if anyone's looking into B2B, I've recently read Lean B2B by ATN. Can't remember his last name. Great book. If uh, B2B is a totally new world to you. All right, last question. What is your favorite aspect about working in B2B or B2C product management? Erica. Thank you for that question. Um, right now, um, right now I'm focused on um, developing um, things for consumers and I really enjoy the, the challenge of um, building that vision and communicating that vision um, to people. Um, I just, I find it so rewarding to, um, to really connect on a deeper level um, with people's whys and their needs and their wants and helping them get wherever it is that they, they wanna go. So that really deeper connection with people, um, I, I find very rewarding. And um, yeah, that's my why. My why is to make the world a better place. Um, and I find that that's a really good way to do that. So uh, thank you so much for the question, Tiffany. Thanks for sharing, Erica. And I believe we are at time. So handing this back over to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thanks everyone for participating. And I will send out that list of the impromptu speakers so everyone can send me in their votes. Thank you so much, Tiffany, for leading that really great and insightful table topics round. And thank you all for your really great responses. Being able to think on your feet is a skill that is tough to master, but it's one that we all have to practice pretty frequently. So thank you so much for your great responses there. I'd love to bring back our general evaluator, Erica, and she will have her team go over our evaluations for today. Take it over, Erica. Thank you so much, Madam Toastmaster. I'm excited to lead our next portion of the meeting. Uh, evaluation is what's key to um, being a Toastmaster and helping each other grow. So being able to give each other um, clear and constructive feedback, um, and, and to receive it gracefully. So um, that's what this portion of the meeting is for. Today, uh, we've only had one speaker for today. So let's see who is giving, Sina, I, I believe you're giving the evaluation. No, actually I am. It's me. Oh, oh sorry, so sorry, the New York. thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> Please take it away. Yeah, can I get a spotlight on Marguerite and the timer too? All right, so um, Marguerite, I just have to say that's a it's a really tough topic, and I appreciate that you embrace that topic with open arms. It's, it's also interesting to me that you come from exactly the opposite space than I did. I come from a B to B, you come from a B to C, so it was really insightful and interesting speech to me to hear your perspective coming from a completely different space in the in a product management arena. Um, I felt that. Your speech opened up really cleanly and well with examples of what B2B um, products were, examples like Slack and things like that, just to anchor people into what you were thinking through. I also appreciated that you touched on the physical constructs around product management and you were you know, particularly focused in on the um, more software side of things. I also appreciated that you went through your speech in the structure of saying, hey, here's the similarities, and then diving deep, more deeply into three different differences. Um, and also, I, you know, from my own personal experience with uh, B2B product management, 
I felt like the three items that you picked out were particularly relevant. So congratulations on a really great speech and topic there. I, I myself found myself learning about things that I didn't even really think about, um, coming from both sides of the coin, if you will, from a product management perspective. Couple of things to be thinking about um, as far as things that could be done a little bit better is if you think about um, some of the, the topics that you brought forward in your speech, think about maybe citing some sources or some sites that you went through and researched. I think everybody would appreciate that too because that's such a topic that isn't often talked about uh, more broadly in our product management space. And then the other thing that I would think about too is at, you have such a great delivery in the way that you speak, but keep that energy up, right? There's a way that you, when you speak, I can see your own personality coming out. Just be a little bit more, keep that energy all the way through the entire speech. Overall, I would say it was a really, really great speech. I really learned things. I found myself taking notes and um, you did a really fantastic job. So congratulations, Marguerite. Thank you. Yeah. All right, back to you, Madam General Evaluator for the rest of the team. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Yeah. Uh, wonderful evaluation as always. All right, um, I'm gonna call through uh, the other um, the other roles and to give their reports. Ashley, would you mind giving your timer report? Yes, absolutely. And as promised, I'm gonna bring my face back. I haven't seen you guys throughout the duration of this meeting, but well done everyone who spoke today at some given point throughout our meeting. You all were within time. So I'm going to go ahead and rattle off times here. Starting off with Marguerite for her standard speech. Her time was at six minutes and 10 seconds. For table topics, we have Jennifer who came in at one minute and five seconds. Monique, one minute and 29 seconds. Amy, one minute and five seconds. Uh, Ranjani, apologize if I mispronounce your name, one minute and 21 seconds, Svetlana, 56 seconds, Kashmira, one minute and 33 seconds, Sina, one minute and nine seconds, Rosie, one minute and 30 seconds, and Erica coming in at 57 seconds. And we just heard from Jennifer for Marguerite's evaluation, and Jennifer's time came in at two minutes and 30 seconds. Well done, everyone. And back to you, Erica. Thank you so much, Ashley. All right, up next we have Rosie with our awe counter report, my most favorite. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we did a great job. We're still improving on our uns and ahs. I'll start off with Amelia. You spoke a lot, but you only had one um that I heard. Erica, five plus ums, ahs. Margaret, Marguerite, um, two ahs, five plus ums. Tiffany, five plus ums. Sita, three ums, one repeats. Siri, my four ahs, three ums, two repeats. Jennifer, three ums. Monique, two ums, two ers. Amy, one um. Ranjani, let's see, three ums. Svetlana, one um. Uh, Kashmira, five ahs, two ums one but and one repeat. And then I didn't count myself, but I'm sure I have many. Cool. Uh, back to you, Erica. Thank you so much, Rosie. All right, up next, we have our grammarian report, Tanya, do you mind? Not at all. Uh, congratulations to Tiffany and uh, Marguerite for using laissez-faire in and perfectly used, I might add. So good job there. Um, quotes and thoughts and words that I thought were, that stuck out to me. Amulia, you, you right from the start, when you were handing back to Erica, you said, pass the torch back to Erica, but it is also election day. So we are passing the torch, right? So I thought that was really intentional or not. I thought that was very poignant. 
because we were passing the torch, I just wanted to do a very quick uh, thank you to the leadership team for everything that you've done. Uh, and I'm excited for the new, the new crop of leaders. Okay, uh, next up, Tiffany used, um, you said that your, your ideas are percolating. I really loved that as a more, like it's a very visual word, but also I feel like you personify per percolation. Like I kind of feel like you are always, uh, the ideas are always there and you're able to do many things. And so I, I, I really like the use of that word. Shrimai was talking about uh, PR and talking about a two pronged, how it's two pronged and um, with internal and external. And those are the different elements of, of PR. And I thought that was very well used. And then a common theme, which that goes with the topic of the day, everyone was using words like usability and balance. And I thought that was fantastic. And then the last thing, uh, it's not improper grammar or suggestions for improvements, but it was just a question. I don't know what existential dread is. I don't know if somebody can explain that to me, but Emilio is hanging up, handing off to Tiffany. Uh, so that's one thing I didn't know what it was and I didn't wanna go Google it because I was paying attention, but I just didn't, I, I don't know what that is. So that is all, I thought it was a great meeting. Back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you so much, Tanya. <laughs> Great report. All right. Um, now, uh, without further ado, I'll just go ahead and jump into my uh, general evaluator report. Um, we started on time, which I love that we always start on time. So thanks, Amy, for getting us kicked off. Amulia, um, beautiful job leading today's meeting. Uh, you were preparing ahead of time, saw all the emails, touching base with all the roles. Um, and helping adjust for last minute changes. Um, what I would like to say that I know some people get caught up on is you know, scheduling the perfect meeting. Um, I've seen people struggle with that in the past. And the goal is not to have these perfect meetings that don't go off with pitches. The goal is to learn to adjust last minute and to adjust gracefully, um, which uh, we all um, have learned to do. And I'm really proud that everybody um, does such a fantastic job with that, so um, for roles, um, thank you all for a great job, um, clearly and expertly describing your roles today um, to all our guests. Um, so everybody know, understands what all of you um, were doing today. Uh, also great reports, um, it showed your, your engagement and really paying attention today. So fantastic job um, to everybody with roles and with speeches. Um, and leaders, uh, even though it wasn't, uh, you know, a typical prepared speech, um, really proud of all of you for preparing your speeches um, and um, introducing everybody to you and your goals. Um, fantastic job today. Uh, questions following speeches. Um, I challenge everybody to kind of jump in there right off of the bat. Sometimes there's a little bit of a pause there, um, but then we got rolling. So good job, everybody. Um, table topics. Um, I really loved, uh, Tiffany, that you reintroduced table topics before you jumped, jumped in. Uh, I think that's really beneficial for our guests as they're, um, you know, by the time you get to table topics, uh, you might forget like what it was and if it's your first time. Um, it's a really great reminder um, and helps them through their first experience. So um, thank you so much for that. Um, Tanya, I want to say a special thank you to you for your visual feedback through table topics. At the beginning of the meeting, we were all clapping and um, uh, engaging and uh, towards table topics, uh, I saw some of us kind of started to get distracted and not be as engaging and, and you reminded me that, oh yes, that, that be engaging. So <laughs> thank you, Tanya, for that. Um, and thank you, Svetlana, for the feedback re regarding spotlighting and pinning. Um, I hadn't caught that, um, and I, um, I like that everybody is always helping each other out um, when they notice something. So um, thank you for that. All right. Um, my only feedback is for the, the word of the day. I still think we're, we're a little bit challenged rem remembering to incorporate the word of the day. So um, just a little um, encouragement for everybody to try to do that um, a little bit more. 
All right, so that is my evaluation. Um, thank you, everybody. Wonderful meeting, as always. Um, I'm going to, well, I would give it back to the Toastmaster of the day to then introduce me again. So <laughs> um, I will do that. Um, would you? <laughs> I, I think we <laughs> might be ready to also announce our winners for table topics. Great. Tiffany, are we ready for that? Yes, thank you, Madam Toastmaster. I really appreciate everyone's thoughtful responses to today's questions. Votes were very close, but the winner of today's table topics was Amy. So congratulations, Amy. All right, back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Amazing. Thank you so much, everyone. What a fantastic set of speeches and evaluations for today. I really loved learning more about the differences and similarities in B2B and B2C product management. Really loved our speaker for today, Margaret Reed, and really great insightful responses from our table topics discussions as well. I think ultimately there is so much to learn from both of these spaces and so much more to grow from our learnings. And I hope our meeting today has inspired and helped you all. So with that, I'd like to invite back up Erica, our club president to take the stage. Thank you. Um, Miss Lori is I think on a beach today, so she's not with us. Um, so I'll just quickly go over uh, VPE stuff. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, please go on to Basecamp and uh, select your speech is complete. It's really important, especially this, this month as we wrap up the, the traditional Toastmasters year. Um, if you have not signed up with the Pathway, please do so um, as soon as you can. That's really also important. Um, that shows your engagement to Toastmasters International. Um, and um, if you have any questions about Pathways, let us know. And I will post this link um, to the sign up and I closed things. So if anybody has that link handy um, for the sign up sheet, my things are closed and I am lost in all of my tabs. Um, and yeah, so we'll hand it back to Amy to close the meeting. Everybody uh, that has questions, please stick around um, and we'll, we'll be happy to answer your questions. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks, Erica. And thanks everyone for a great meeting today. And I will stop the recording and we'll be adjourned. <laughs>